show you how to increase your chances of repairing your credit to 38% by just doing two basic things. So let's look at the right of the board here. And just go right into it. This is going to be a quick video for you guys, but there's going to be nuggets in here. Usually I make like one hour videos, 30 minute videos. And the reasons why I do that is because the things that I'm trying to discuss, it takes a lot of words and it takes a lot of effort and detail to describe it in a way that is the best way. So maybe you guys don't like long videos on credit repair, but I think it's important because if you want to master anything and if you want to understand something, you're going to have to take your time to listen, read, and collaborate with other people that are doing this. I've been in this business for 10 years and I've had tremendous success. I'm sharing the strategies that I use on a regular basis and I've used over the years. Although throughout the years, things change and things have gotten much harder because technology has made things easier for creditors to verify things. The things I'm gonna discuss in this video today are gonna to help you increase your chances of success by 38%. So let's go over to this side of the board. So here I have a mock credit report, a hypothetical credit report, okay, and I have structured it how basically a credit report looks like here let's look at a credit report so on the credit report you have the personal information section which is at the top your name your address and all your previous addresses your date of birth social depending upon which credit report you get and your phone number and then your employment like where you work so you got to clear all this stuff out below that you have the public record section You'll have your bankruptcies. You'll have to just report the case and the, case, the court case number and the case number. Below this, you'll have all of your account info, such as your collections and your charge offs. So here I have an example collection. You'll have the name of the collection, the creditor, the type of account, whether it's individual, authorized user, blah, 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 or joint, original amount, original term, the status of that account right now, the account number. The date it was opened and the type, whether it was a installment loan, a mortgage loan, et cetera, et cetera. Your monthly payment, your highest balance reported, and the date of the status, when it was closed, right? when it was opened, and then when it was closed. Below that, you're going to have your accounts in good standing. So here in this category, you will have your late payments. In yesterday's video, I discussed... How to remove late payments you might want to check that out i'll leave the link in the description below and uh, or you can just go back to my uh video section and you can see the how to remove late payments video it's like literally the video that i posted before this and it will show you how to remove late payments this video i'm going to show you how to increase your chances of success by 38 percent. but before that we need to understand how a credit report is structured so your accounts in good standing will have your good accounts and also the late payments but also in your accounts that are in good standing, you're going to have something that's really bad, which is your highest balance reported. And these will be, this will be a big factor. But you can't even like pay attention on that. This is a big factor, but this is compared to what else you have as well. So 30% of your credit report is your amounts owed, but it's also compared to what you have available in comparison to what you owe. So it's relative at that point. So when you target a, an account and it might say the original amount and the highest balance right here, this section, it might be, your original amount might be 3K. And then your highest balance was like 2K, okay? Then that's the majority of that amount that you have. And then your score is going to go down. So that would be a factor which you would want to target right here, your highest balance reported. So your late payments too, late payments are 35% of your FICO score. So when you look at these two factors here, you're just bumping up your score when you're targeting those factors. So that's um, you know another point. I can make another video about this later, but we got to do this real quick. So I just want to show you the possibilities of what you can dispute in this section. Your inquiries, these are really important. So like I said, in order to take care of this stuff in the middle, take care of this first, top and bottom, okay? Take care of these first. 
let's look at the dispute life cycle. So number one, in the beginning, you want to dispute all your personal info and all the inquiries. Why? Why are we going to, why do we have to do that? Because your personal information and your inquiries, well, let's just start with your personal information. Your personal information is tied to those accounts that you want to get removed. That's if you want to get them removed. If you want to remove a late payment, your personal information has little to nothing to do. Last time I checked, with getting the late payment off. I didn't mention any of that in my last video. So this would apply to charge-offs and collections, right? It's really important. Dispute all your personal information. Now, how are you going to get that off when creditors are verifying that you actually have the address with the individual creditor? That's tough. Well, one way you can do that, you can update your personal information, such as your driver's license. Go to the DMV, say you live somewhere else, a family, a friend, people. Do what you got to do, all right? If you have to use your best friend's address to help fix your credit, that's a good friend. If you have to use your mom's address. Now, before you do that, any address that you update to your new credit report, you want to, you have to make sure that it was never used in an application that you filled out. That leads us to ask, where do these credit bureaus get these addresses? How do these creditors get these addresses? Well, when you applied, you applied for credit at like a jewelry store or a gift card or an online subscription or an Amazon credit card or Apple credit card or even an iPhone credit when you got a phone. All the phones that you got when you applied to get to lease the phone or whatever or to get a payment plan, you reported that address and now it's on record to your report. That address and your name is associated with that report until it gets updated. And in order to remove this one, you have to replace it with something new. Now, how do we replace it with something new? You do the homework, you scurry, and you do some brainstorming as to all the applications you filled out. Generally, you're going to find them here. You're going to find your phone numbers that you had, your, uh, your previous addresses and your addresses. They're all going to be here. So you can look at this. What I would do if you're using MyScore, IQ, Identity IQ, or Smart Credit, or even Experian, or TransUnion, or Equifax.com, or even Credit Karma, look at all those credit reports, write down all the addresses, and you there, you've pretty much covered your basis. Unless there's something that is not reported yet that they can look up, you have to think, right? Think, think, think. This is the really, really important part of this process. And target those, and then get a new address. Like I said, use your friend's address, use your mom address, or get a virtual address you can go to Google Get a virtual address, use that address. Don't use a P.O. box. P.O. box are not good, okay? P.O. box are not good. That's like a red flag right there. You want a physical address, all right? An address that is a residential address or a business address is fine, either or. There are commercial addresses, but they actually have residents in them. Like people live in their offices. I used to live in my office at one time, right, when I first started. Come on. I have dentists, they live in their dentist because it's kind of like a nice condo. And then they have like offices, but in the back, it's actually like a livable place. It's actually quite nice. So yeah, you can do the same there. So go to the California DMV. If you're in California, where I'm from, go to your DMV and update it. Get a proof of mail. Just get something mailed. Forward your mail. But make sure when you forward that mail, it's you don't talk to the creditors about this. You get a new phone or a new device or something that you can get mail from, like something with a letter, like a bill or something, to that new address because you have to go to the DMV and you know pr show them that you actually live there or you, you're getting mail there. All right. That's the, you have to follow the prerequisites of the DMV in order to do that. So I'll leave the prerequisites of the DMV. I don't know them off the top of my head right now, but I'll leave a link in the description below. You can look that up. They might vary between states, but for sure, check your DMV to make sure you fulfill all the prerequisites to get that name and address change. Not the name change, but the address change. Now you might say, this takes long. You know, hey, do you really want to fix your credit? Okay. A lot of people are just done home about disputing this stuff. They're skipping steps. They want to go to phase two, step two, but no, no, no. 
you want to increase your chances of success. You might move fast to step two, but you're going nowhere fast. Cover your bases first. Now, what's a time frame to get this done? Well, seven to 10 days is like the soonest. So before you dispute this stuff, make sure that you dispute this. Wait seven to 10 days. There is no uh, absolute 100% possibility that within seven to 10 days, that this is going to be updated. But there's a high chance if you do it the right way. You need to make sure that you have something to replace it with that has never been on this report. Once you have that, there's no way that they can deny you to do that. That's your right. So how do you dispute your information? Well, you want to go to TransUnion, Equifax. You want to go to TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax.com. And you can literally update that online super fast. And then seven to 10 days, that's going to be fixed. Okay. Seven to 10 days, you uh, that's going to be fixed. You can even do it through the CFPB. The CFPB, you can do that as well. While you do your personal information, you also want to dispute the inquiries because these inquiries are usually, you might find inquiries the collection that you want to remove, perhaps the inquiry is in the inquiry section. It's still there if it's within two years, right? Perhaps that inquiry is on there. And it may not be a hard inquiry, but it's also a soft inquiry. So you still got to dispute those. Make sure that they're off. Make sure that they're off, okay? So make sure you get the inquiries removed because you may have an inquiry that's not even associated with this charge off, but it's associated with an account in good standing, but still that account still has your address. And since it has your address, the bureau can see that that was your address and they're going to report it back on there. And then you're stuck. That be, that's when it becomes like pulling teeth. Okay. That's when it becomes stuck. So you want to make sure you get those accounts off. Now, disputing inquiries, that's another, I'll have to make another video about that because there are people that legit dispute inquiries and they get the positive account removed and they lost all their history because they're doing it the wrong way. I don't have enough time to teach you how to dispute inquiries in this video, but I will make a video on how to dispute inquiries without compromising the, uh, the open account. I've been doing that for many, many years. Uh, one of my recent uh, clients right here, Lewis Hunter, he's a case study. Some people might say you can't dispute inquiries uh, with that. You can't dispute inquiries on open accounts because it will remove the positive account. Well, no, we're doing it for him. This is this is the case study right here. We're doing it for him. I know how to dispute inquiries and not get the account removed. You can't just use one trick in the book for all the problems. Credit repair is intricate. So I just want to let you guys know that this is the way you want to do it. But again, I need to make a video dedicated to how to remove inquiries specifically so you understand it and you can do it yourself. But now you know, now you know that half of the battle or close to half of the battle is disputing all your personal information and inquiries first. Okay. This could take seven to 10 days usually, but it can also, it could take a month or two. Sometimes it's hard. It's like finding, looking for a needle in the haystack, trying to find a creditor that's verifying that address. You'll see when you dispute things and the, the bureau will say, well, they verified the creditor has verified this address belongs to you. Then you got to search for that creditor. That's hard. And then if you're not looking at all your credit reports, you will notice if you look at the bottom where it says creditors uh, info, underneath the inquiry section or right by it, you're going to have the addresses that they wanted to report on the credit report. Those addresses may not be accurate. That's another video I have to put because you could use this against the creditor to get the account removed, but that's in another video. But I just want to leave you these nuggets here that there are, there are many moving parts to this. There's too many moving parts to credit repair. And so when you target each and every single one, uh, strategically, then you're going to increase your chances of success beyond 30%.
This right here, just doing this, increases your chances of getting that deleted if you do it properly by 38%. Now number two is when you actually want to initiate dispute. You can do that online, you can do it with CFPB, you can do it by mail, if you so choose. I don't, I don't do it by mail, I do it by online and then CFPB. Sometimes I do mail. So when you are mailing out something to the creditor, I mean, how else can you do that? A good way to communicate with a creditor is go to your local court and you can e-file a small claims lawsuit against the creditor and that's a way to communicate them it doesn't cost but maybe 20 bucks to file it 30 bucks to file the small claims all you have to do is legit have your credit report show the violations have the phone logs and show the show that court that they have violated the fair debt collections practice act and then claim damages you're no one's saying you're going to win no one's saying you're going to lose if you have all your docs and all your ducks in a row then you're probably going to win but the, here's the thing, when you e-file, you save time, you save money, and you can do it online. You can do this in New York. Um, I've done it to creditors. Instead of writing a letter, you have the court tell them they gotta come to court to talk about it. Then they know you're serious, right? You can't, it's like hitting a bullseye. When you hit a target, when you punch, when you're boxing, most people, most amateurs, they're looking to punch this part, the surface, because their eyes are focused here. But a champion's eyes, they're focused through the target. You want to aim through it. It's the same when you work with these creditors. You want to hit through them. Use the small claims courts, the, court, uh, the local courts, to e-file a lawsuit to them. Now, this happens when they make Fair Debt Protections Practice Act is uh, equal to $1,000 fines per violation, such as calling you during any time that's inconvenient, uh, sending mail to your work, um, harassing you, threatening you, and misrepresenting the amount of the collection. Now, that happens a lot when you pay attention to your credit reports. All you have to do is find one credit report. And by the way, guys, this is one credit report. Let's just say this is December's credit report, like December 2023. But you got to get uh, backdated as much as possible. Let's say 12 months, all the way back to December 22. And you could do further. So you want to get all those credit reports, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, compare all of them using AI, okay? Makes it easier. You can upload this. You can take all those PDFs. You can download them. Take some time, but here's the thing. Are you, are you doing credit repair like a master? Or are you doing it like just some regular idiot, right? You want to make sure that your credit repair expert the one that you hire is really meticulous and organized and really thorough. It's like doing surgery, right? You want a, a good physician. You want a good surgeon. I operate like a surgeon. So I look at all the possibilities. We're digging, we're, we're digging for gold here. We're looking for the, the problems. So you can go get all these credit reports and then do all of this. All of it, it takes a lot of work. That's why you want to hire me, <laughs> okay? You can do this on your own, but it's a lot to learn. And then you'll get busy, you have to pick up the kids, you have to go to work, something will happen, life happens, and then you're like, you get discouraged. When they come back as verified, then you're gonna be stumped and gonna be pissed, right? What's compelling you to get this removed? Your emotions? Your emotions aren't gonna delete this, only intelligence is, right? So save up your money, pay me to do it, and I'll do it the right way. Okay. Now there's ways to get these collections off. Um, I'll make another video about that. This is just a general video for the lack of time. But when you dispute these collections, okay, you're basically auditing them. You're auditing them. You have a right to audit. So this is gray area. You're not declaring fraud. There's no identity theft, but you you can audit them. You, the 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 uh, the burden of proof is on them. They have to prove that it belongs to you, right? Now, when your addresses are are different, and when your inquiries that are possibly associated with this account, that's a very that's a small chance. Not a super small chance, but it's a small chance because inquiries stay on your credit report for like two years, and so usually people 
that I see, they've had uh, credit repair. I mean, they've, they've messed up their credit. They've got delinquency in like collection status. I mean, like two years later, and then even before like three years, four years. And some, and then you have some that are like recent. Yeah, then it would apply to you. But like again, I will tell you again, the inquiries from the good accounts will be associated with those old accounts and you gotta get those off. Now you might say, well, if I have the, um, the good account on my credit report, what's removing the inquiry gonna do? Well, because you'll have your address reported to that account, that good account, well, that you have to go to that individual creditor, that one, because it's good, not bad, and you give them the updated address. You can change your, you can forward your mail. You can call them and say, hey, you can log into your account, say, this is my new address. I want you to send mail to this address. Delete that other address off your system. I don't want it. Call them and tell them to do it. You do that, right? That way you're minimizing minimizing the chance of failure. And then you can get this off potentially. There's other ways to get this off. This is not the only way, but this is this will be a good high percentage way to get this off quick. Uh, another factor in quickness would be the method. I have another video about credit repair. It discusses the methods mainly pertaining to mail disputes and online. So depending upon which avenue you take and how skilled and versed you are with such, it would, you know, it would take six months, maybe even two months to get it off. There's one guy that I uh, talked about yesterday. I didn't show his face, but his name's Mike. He's a big, he's a big name in the credit repair YouTube space. He says it takes him like six months to remove late payments. Doesn't take me six months of late payments. It doesn't take me six months to remove late payments. So my way is already faster than his, and then he was missing some intricate details. I made a video, and based upon what he was saying, this is the best way to remove late payments, this is the easiest way, whatever, he missed a lot of steps. My last video is like an hour long compared to his 10 minute, maybe 13 minute video. So which do you think is more information? A 15 minute video or a hour long video that touches on the reasons why his methods are inferior and why our methods are superior and why ours is more faster. The problem is most people don't know how to dispute correctly online. That's where they fail. So I agree. Like if you're doing it, how all these morons are doing it on YouTube, then yeah, that's dumb. But they're, they're pretending like they know stuff, but th they got it all wrong. My last video on disputes versus mail proves that. So, Again, this is one of the high percentage ways to get this off. It's not the entire way. So before you jump the gun to this step, you want to make sure you take care of this first. Another thing I forgot to mention, you want to suppress all other nine bureaus. Some people say, oh, it doesn't have, it's not important. Actually, yes, it is because I have had proof and letters from bureaus stating that one of these nine bureaus has verified an address and had I um, suppressed it, it would not have happened. There's your proof right there. I can prove that. These are case studies that I can prove. And this pisses me off when someone says, oh, you're, you're BS. Anyone can say anything on YouTube, but you have to prove it. I'm, I'm showing you guys case studies. I showed you guys my playlist. My playlist has hundreds of reviews, hundreds of videos. Within those hundreds of videos, in each video, there's maybe 10 client case studies that I show you. So you could do the math. 100 times 10. That's 1,000 people right there. Right. So again, this is what you want to do. There's nine other bureaus. There's a link in the description below. You can go to my website, uh, pinnaclecreditrepair.com, pinnaclecreditmanagement.com. Click the, on the right tab where it says uh, info, scroll all the way down to suppress. And then you'll see all the other nine bureaus that you could freeze because they're hosting information that you're unaware of. And it's like the unknown. You want to fear the unknown. Don't gamble against it. Suppress it, clear it up, and just cover your bases. This is not all, this is not going to 100% guarantee your success. But again, neither is this. But this is heightening the chance of your success. There's so many moving parts in this uh, industry that you've got to try your best to cover them all. And if you don't have the, uh, if you don't have the fortitude and the focus and the dedication to do that, line by item, line by item, I told you. December credit report, this one, and backdate it a year, even two years if you feel so bold, right? Do you have the patience to do that? And when you're doing that, do you know what you're looking for? 
if the answer is no or you're doubtful, then you're not on my level, all right? So that pretty much consists of this. Again, this is a theoretical, hypothetical credit report. Not all credit reports look like this. And uh, this is these are not all the ways you can get this stuff off. I'm missing out others for the lack of time because there's so many. So when an when a account is filed a certain way, um, it would determine how you dispute it. There's some people that say, oh, well, this date open was wrong, and that was wrong. And so they dispute these individual sections. Guess what the creditor does? They just update it. By law, they have to update it or change it. It doesn't mean they have to remove the account. A lot of people, they do that, and they just get it updated. Oh, you didn't get the account removed. You dip shit. You have to do other things. You can dispute these individually, but you're not packaging it right. You have to do some further steps, which I'll go in another video. Um, I just want to let you guys know quickly that there are things that are outside of the untrained eye that other people are missing. But this is, these are the general. This is a high success. Again, I don't want to give you something that's a low success uh, rate. But if you do this, it will increase your success by 38% if you do this. All right, up to 38%. Again, nothing's 100% guaranteed. There's so many variables, but I'd say if you're willing to bet, it's going to be like 38%. Okay. So when you dispute, start from top to bottom, get this out of the way first. This can take seven to 10 days to do before you move into the step two of initiating dispute. And that's just round one of dispute. You heard from Mike, right? You heard from Mike. He said he might have to dispute four to six rounds of disputes for just a late payment. 30 days between every dispute, he's disputing by mail. I know he's an advocate by mail. That's 30 days, six times uh, 30. That's six months right there. So that's a long time. My process is going to take much quicker, much quicker. But even if you do my quick process, it doesn't mean it's going to happen all the time super fast. There's other variables. Sometimes it's hard. Like I said, it's like going through... Uh, looking for a needle in the haystack to find that creditor that's verifying your address. That takes some focus right there. Okay. So I think we covered pretty much everything. This is going to increase your success by 38%. Try it. But if you don't have the time or the experience to do it, you can always hire me. You can hire me personally for 750 or you can try to do it yourself. Either way, guys, I'll see you on the next video. Take it easy.